All right, guys, so in this last episode here, we have some very important, uh, uh, mostly impossibility results. All right, so let's start with the first theorem. Uh, suppose that the voting rule F satisfies strategy proofness and decisiveness. I mean, no players has incentive to deviate, so everybody is going to vote truthfully. And the voting rule is decisive, meaning it will always give us one and only one outcome. All right. Well, then uh, the voting rule F actually satisfies, uh, I mean, is ordinal, meaning uh, cardinal preferences, the, you know, the intensity of uh, preferences is like how much you like uh, candidate A over B is irrelevant. All it matters is how you rank the alternatives. All right. So that's, that's a very... Uh, important theorem because for the rest of our results we're going to ignore uh, the uh, axiom ordinality because it is going to be implied by strategy proofness and decisiveness anyhow. All right well the next theorem is unfortunately an impossibility theorem which kind of directly follows from uh, 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 the arrows impossibility theorem. Well look if I have at least three or more alternatives. By the way, I don't know if you noticed, but uh, all these impossibility results are true if we have three or more alternatives. If we have only two alternatives, well, then the arrow's impossibility result is not going to hold. There is actually uh, some uh, voting rules which have nice properties, okay? But obviously, in many uh, voting uh, situations, uh, only two candidates is not realistic. Uh, but again, uh, uh, in many other voting situations, it may be just enough. All right, so if we have at least three uh, candidates, then there exists no voting rule which is going to satisfy all the six axioms. Uh, but here, instead of uh, this axiom, we incorporate strategy proofness because remember D and SP implies O anyhow. So that's an impossibility. However, don't forget, under the assumption that preferences are not restricted. Okay? Well, another impossibility theorem, also known as, well, this is a different version of Gibbert Sedert weight theorem, by the way. Uh, but this is a kind of a direct Im implication of Gibbert Sedert weight theorem. And so I call it as uh, Gibbert said it with impossibility theorem. It says the following. If we have at least three alternatives or candidates, well, then there exists no voting rule which satisfies Prado principle, anonymity, neutrality, uh, decisiveness, and strategy proofness on the full unrestricted domain of preferences. Uh, it's impossible. Uh, you either have to get rid of some of those assumptions or you have to narrow down the preference domain. Well, uh, here's what we do. We narrow down the preference domain, for example. Uh, the, uh, remember, this is the majority rule or the Condorcet rule. FC satisfies all those six axioms, Proto principle, anonymity, neutrality, IIA, decisiveness, and strategy proofness on some restricted domain U, if and only if this domain does not contain uh, Condorcet cycles. Remember the Condorcet cycles we talked about, uh, you know, uh, I think two previous uh, uh, lecture videos. And so if your our domain of preferences doesn't contain Condorcet cycles, well, then you know what? Uh, majority rule actually satisfy all those properties, meaning it's a wonderful rule because everybody is going to vote truthfully. Uh, it's going to be uh, pretty uh, 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 optimal in the sense that uh, no inferior outcome will be chosen or candidate will be chosen. It's going to be anonym, anonymous, meaning no um, voter has a, 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 a influence on the outcome and it's neutral. No candidate has influence on the outcome. IIA, meaning voting uh, splitting is not going to happen. And it will always give us a unique outcome. Uh, well, perfect. So again, obviously the question is what type of domains include Condorcet cycles and what type of domains do not? Uh, that's, you know, uh, that's not what we are going to talk about. And, you know, we can ask a bunch of other questions. Well, maybe IIA is too strong 
for the framework that you are analyzing. And so you want to get rid of IIA. Well, then you may want to look at strategy proof and all the, I mean, I'm sorry, you may be looking at uh, voting rules which satisfy all those axioms except IIA on full domain of preferences. Uh, do we have possibility result? Or we can get rid of some of those assumptions, weaken them maybe, strengthen them, some of the others. And so we can play with axioms and or preference domains and sometimes get possibility results, sometimes get impossibility results. Uh, I mean, again, there's a huge literature about uh, voting and choice theory. And this is just a brief introduction maybe. And so I'm not going to cover everything about social choice theory or voting theory, but I just wanted to give you a flavor of uh, you know, what, what the main question of this uh, literature is and how, you know, we approach to those questions uh, and so on and so forth. I hope that was all clear and helpful. Uh, see you next time. Bye-bye.